Well, hey there, my friend. Welcome back to the show. I'm Deanna Yates, and you are listening to episode 162 of Wannabe Clutter Free Podcast. On today's episode, I'm chatting with Amy Nesbitt about focusing on the joy in our lives. Amy and I met through networking online, and turns out we are connected to some of the same people. So it was great to get to sit down with her for a conversation about motherhood and how to enjoy it more, even in the midst of the busyness of everyday modern life. But before I get ahead of myself and wrapped up in our conversation, I want to say a big thank you for joining me today. I know life is busy and it's summer break here in the U.S., so time is even more crunched with school out and all the various kids' camps and activities to manage. I am outside recording this intro and outro to my conversation that I had this week with Amy, and so I understand what it's like to have to be juggling all the different things at the same time. I appreciate that you are here, and I hope you walk away from today feeling inspired and ready to take action on some area in your life, whether that is with your mindset, your physical stuff, how you show up for your family, or just taking time for yourself. If you enjoy what you hear today, could you please do me a favor and leave a rating and a review for this show? You can rate it on most podcast listening apps, but you can also leave a review on Apple Podcasts or a comment on a specific episode on Spotify. And I'm also putting these guest episodes up on YouTube now, so come check it out over there. And of course, you can leave a comment. Your reviews are the lifeblood for this show, and they are what help me reach more listeners, which means I can get more amazing guests on this show for you. I would love it if you could just take a minute to give the show a shout out or me or whatever you would like to say. So thank you so much. And now let's learn about my amazing guest. Amy Nesbitt is a full-time corporate working world. Sorry. Amy Nesbitt is a full-time corporate world working mama of two boys in Silicon Valley. She is a forever learner, passionate about wellness for herself, her family, and helping other mamas find wholeness in their life. You can find her spreading the joy for accessible Japanese cooking and culture on her YouTube channel, This Japanese American Life, or her food Instagram, Amy Ends Eats, because you have to enjoy the ordinary moments. Give this episode a listen, and when you are done, head over to wannabeclutterfree.com slash 162 to get the show notes for today's episode with links to Amy's various adventures and more. I will also have a link to a special project that we chat about that I am part of with Amy, and you will not want to miss it, I promise. So please go on over to wannabeclutterfree.com forward slash the number 162 to get that and make sure you don't miss out. And now let's get to our conversation. And now let's get to our conversation. Well, hi, Amy. Welcome to Wanna Be Clutter Free. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so excited. This is going to be fun. It's a little bit different. You and I have met because we are doing a virtual summit together. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we dive into that, can you please tell my listeners about you and just, yeah, tell us all about you. Sure. So normally you'd find me in the corporate world. I'm a full-time working mom up in Silicon Valley in California. And over the course of the pandemic, I started dabbling in a number of different things because quote unquote, had more time (laughs) balancing all the things. One of the things was starting a YouTube and it was just really started as like capturing joys in our family because You could either focus on the hard things, which there were many, or you can focus on the good things that were still there because there were also plenty. Like we both had jobs that we could work remote. We had our health. Our kids were doing like virtual. One was doing virtual school. One was preschool out. So, (laughs) right. (laughs) But we could do all those things. And so we were focusing on the good things. We said, even if the grandparents were the only ones that watched this, it's fine. It was just for us and our mental sanity of doing something. And that morphed into a number of other things that I can touch on. But to keep it short, yeah, I have just come from random (laughs) starting something to starting a summit and diving into a lot of new things that have opened up a lot of fun opportunities. Oh, I love that. I love how you just took something that was like, nobody was really enjoying that time and said, why let's just make it better. And, and I love that you also just dove in. I'm one of those people that's just like, why not? I mean, why not? (laughs) Why not me? And why not do it? Because it could be fun. And also giving yourself the ability to say, if it doesn't work, what's the harm, right? Like I can stop. (laughs) I mean, it might look like a fool, but it's okay. (laughs) 
I'm okay. Yeah. I'm totally fine making a fool out of myself. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. I love it. I love it. I think that's why you and I have connected. We just have this kind of open spirit. I love it. So that's right. <laughs> try new things, right? And see what works, what doesn't, and then change and iterate. Yeah. So what are, what have been some of your favorite videos? What are some of the videos you've put together and what are your, some of your favorite ones? So it has morphed from finding joys in our normal day life more into, it's called this Japanese American life. And so my heart kind of geared more towards passing down more of the Japanese American or well, Japanese culture to my kids who are half Japanese. And so the foods, the culture, like the fun things that we get to do for them to experience that side of their heritage. I tend to focus more on that, but there's also a ton of fun things. Like there's an amusement park by us. And so we go to Great America and <laughs> have a lot of fun there and show people different rides and experiences, all of that. And I love to eat. So I also ah. have a food Instagram that I also started in the pandemic because why not, right? Why not? I love to eat. I love to share what I eat. People ask me where I like to eat. So that is also there. So a lot of food oriented things that I tend to focus on. Nice. Is the food more eating out or cooking at home? So on the YouTube, you'll find a lot of more like healthier versions of things or like mm. Japanese recipes. And then on the food Instagram, you'll find all sorts of eating out because I also love just like experiencing cultures through food and trying yeah. new things and it doesn't always work out well, <laughs> but it's always fun to try new things. Interesting. I love that. One of my favorite trying new food experiences was in Chicago. I was in my twenties and I was a personal trainer and one of my clients was Ethiopian and she took me to this authentic Ethiopian restaurant in Chicago. And it was such a cool experience, like just getting to do it with her, like with a local versus going there myself. If I would have shown up with my boyfriend, now husband, like if we would have gone, we'd just been like, all right, we tear off this bread and we eat it. Right. Yeah. But the <laughs> Ethiopian tradition is you actually feed your, the person you're with. And so that was such an interesting thing, right? Where, where she would take the, you know, it's like a flat piece of bread and then you dip it in all the things and you feed each other. And I just, I don't know. It was just yeah. so cool. And so I love that. I love that you're trying new cultures and doing that through food is really one of the, one of my favorite ways to do that. Although I'm not a very adventurous eater. So mm, I proceed with caution. <laughs> no, I had no idea that you, that aspect of it, right? Because it's yeah. the one with the, the, on the bottom, right? Yes. It's like the whole, yeah. And then like the plate is and, the bread yes. almost like, but it's yeah. on a platter, obviously, but yes. Like it's all like the, the spongy is... kind of, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah. I don't know what Very it's called. Very thin pancake. Sorry. Like, yes. <laughs> I had no idea you're supposed to feed each other. Next time, next time I will Google it first, just in case it's been quite a while. Yeah. By yeah. you know, so but you might want to Google it. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. But these are the yeah. neat things, right? And I absolutely love travel too. So totally. now that things have kind of gone back more to normal and being able to yeah. hopefully take my kids in the future uh, back to Japan and then to other cultures to experience the food and the life there. Nice. So do you do a lot of these things at home or do you try to find, are there places locally you can do? I mean, you're in San Francisco, so you're in a big city. You probably have mm -hmm. access to a lot of this stuff. What about, so tell me about that first. Like where I go to eat out or? Or like for just like teaching your kids about the Japanese lifestyle. Is a lot of that at home or have you been able to find places out? Most of it is my mom. Like my mom, okay. is, well, I guess most of it is at home, I should say. Okay. Uh, my parents are from Japan. And so a lot of it has transferred to me, not as much as I'd like to, I guess. And so the language, it's kind of a, whenever my parents are here, you guys are talking in Japanese, right? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. But she also cooks amazing Japanese food. So mm -hmm. it's almost like also chronicling recipes to pass down because I hear a lot of people say, I wish I had learned my mom's cooking or my grandparents cooking or things like that. And I don't want that to happen, you know? And mm -hmm. so I think this is just another aspect of that, of if we can have fun cooking together and also experiencing that culture together and then pass it down. That would be all just a wonderful package. Nice. Nice. Okay. So then how do you, how would you recommend people get started doing this kind of a thing? What are your tips? How would YouTube you, or just like finding them, those things that matter the most to them oh, and yeah. then chronicling them? Oh gosh, that is a great question. I mean, 
it took me so long to get to this point, right? I mean, I think I've always loved cooking. I've always loved having my kids in the kitchen with me. And I've always loved being in the kitchen with my mom, my aunt, my grandma, right? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's just always been a part of me and always something that I knew as I had kids that I wanted to pass on. And I also didn't want my kids to be those kids that went to college and didn't know how to do anything, you know? So life skills are really important to me. But I think people know, like, even if you ask the question, like, if you could do anything instead of what you're doing right now, what would it be? There are certain things that come up. And for me, if someone asked me that, or someone didn't ask me that before, and I said, oh, if I could give up everything, like money was not an object, I would love to travel and eat and just experience life in that way, you know? So I don't know if this is one way for me to do so (laughs) and not be so bold in quitting my job and traveling the world and taking young kids all around the world. And that was, um, oh, the great seat. You're bold. (laughs) You're bold. You're bold. You did it for a year, right? A year. We did it for a year. Actually, we did it twice. Once when she was a year for six months. And then once when she was five for almost a year and a half. That's amazing. That's amazing. I wish I had the boldness to do that. When I've thought about it multiple times, I had friends that took a year off and just went to Japan with their kids. And mm-hmm. I said, that would be amazing. Well, maybe Clearly, you're I did not do it. it. You're <laughs> building up to it. it. I actually know a lot of friends that are planning to take time off when the kids are in junior high. So see, oh. you've got a few years to plan. Maybe that's I always thought younger, but you. Oh. you know, I did too. And then I have a bunch of friends all of a sudden that are like, oh no, we don't really want to do junior high. Junior high was kind of traumatic for us. So we're going to take our kids out for that year or two and go wow. do something else. Either homeschool. I have a couple of friends that are like, yeah. no, we're just going to homeschool. I have another friend that's like, no, I want to travel. So yeah, I don't know. Wow. Wow. There you go. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe never say never, right? Never say (laughs) never. You're taking the baby steps now. That's right. How do we bring more joy into the kitchen? Because I love the idea of cooking with everyone. Doesn't always happen in our house. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Do you have tips for bringing more joy into the kitchen? Is it a planning thing? Is it a prep thing? Is it a, yeah, what is that? Um, okay. So I might ask for you or sure. with the child for like the family, or for anyone. yeah. Okay. Like I cook regularly. I cook pretty much every night. Yep. And so sometimes I think maybe it's a planning thing, right? Like mm-hmm. we get busy and then I'm like, ah, we got to get dinner on the table. So I'm kind of rushing and it isn't necessarily the activity I think of us doing all together. So maybe yeah. it's a planning thing, but also then once we're in the kitchen, we have a small kitchen. How do we yeah. make that more joyful? How do we yeah. kind of enjoy the time together? So I will say you get very different answers from my husband and I, because my husband Ooh. is not a kitchen person. Okay, <laughs> like let's he is trying. Both, yeah. Yeah. He is trying, but he definitely does not have the bandwidth to delegate things. Like he is just trying to get things done. Right. And he will admit himself that he is not good with knife skills. He just cannot multitask with other people in the kitchen. For me, I feel comfortable enough. Right. Okay. I guess the big thing is leave yourself time because if you are like, I need to get dinner on the table. Now there is no bandwidth, right. To let the kids Mm -hmm. join in and watch them and not get stressed out about the mess that is being made. Yeah. So leave yourself time, not right before dinner time. And this is hard for working parents who rush home and then are trying to do all the things. So I think building up those skills for the kids to help need to happen at a different time. Okay. So I think because my kids have been kind of raised in this, they know how to, they know how to peel, they know how to chop. Like I'm pretty confident in their knife skills. So I don't feel like I have to micromanage them. And that is a huge thing because if I'm like, oh my gosh, you're going to cut your fingers off. That is a huge worry that I'm not getting any of the stuff that I'm supposed to be getting done. So it's just a very stressful thing. But I think once the baby steps are done, because we're teaching our kids in baby steps, right? We don't expect Mm -hmm. our kids to all of a sudden be able to do all the things adults can do. And so as we trust and build those skills for them. I think it gets a little less stressful and then you can start delegating 
And then my kids sometimes even say, oh, I can cook this simple meal for us. Like during the pandemic, this was huge where they actually, it's like a super simple meal, right? They just had to cut one thing. There was like a pre-made sauce, but having someone else cook <laughs> so that I didn't have to think about that was amazing. Mm, awesome. What was the meal they made? They made a paneer. It's like, there's this Indian sauce. I do not make Indian well at home, but my family <laughs> loves Indian. And so there's this sauce that's like fantastic and all the ingredients are clean and great and organic. Mm. And so my kids will cut up the paneer, take out like frozen spinach from the freezer, cook the rice, put in whatever veggies they want to and bam, <laughs> heat up naan if somebody wants naan. Okay. So that's nice. one of their good things. Plus, yeah. I can go on and on. <laughs> a few steps. I was going to say that's quite a few steps. Yeah, and all it's actually really cute. Together. I have two boys, but when they do it together, I kind of overhear them say like, okay, you cut this and I'll mix this, you know, and it's just a very sweet thing to hear as a mom because mm. there's plenty of fighting. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's not like this perfect, <laughs> but when you hear those moments, yeah. right, it's just totally heart grows 10 sizes, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, nice. Well, and it's interesting as you're saying this, I'm almost thinking about like, how can we make, right? We expect our kids to go off and play, mm -hmm. right? So how can we maybe ask them to go off and play in the kitchen? Yeah. Right. Can we make some of it more fun? Can cutting things up or chopping things or yeah. what do you need to do in order to get that to that level? Like washing mm -hmm. things daughter when she was a little little loved playing in the sink right yeah, yeah. But I have put the vegetables in there and let her play with the vegetables yeah, like they were the absolutely. boats that she was playing with in the water probably would have like been measuring, a good idea. you know measuring is a super easy yeah. thing kids play with sand all the time right so it's kind right. of now using little spoons or using a butter knife to cut a banana or mixing mixing mm -hmm. was like my kids favorite thing. like we'll make pancakes and who gets to do the mixing you know yeah. Just fun things. Yeah. Yeah. Just a great reminder. I need to invite her into the kitchen more. Yeah, for sure. There's no reason yeah. why, especially on a Sunday morning, making pancakes, everybody yeah. can get into the kitchen together. And if it yeah. takes a little bit longer to get it on the table, who cares? And so. know that you will have a mess, right? When kids totally. are involved, there will be a mess. But as long as our expectations are there from the beginning and you're not going, oh, there's flour everywhere or yeah. oh, milk, things like yeah. that. It's just... Yeah. And I think kids are more likely to eat things that they make too, or even if they're cutting veggies, I know cutting is a, a bigger skill, but mm -hmm. they'll try different things or be like, oh, I made that. So I should try it. And I think it's a yeah. huge part of that. I just bought a spiralizer kind of chopper tool. Yeah. So I'm like, maybe if I can get her those cut resistant gloves, we all get the <laughs> and then try here, you can try yeah. this thing. And if our hand slips, she's got the gloves on. So yeah. it's not that big a deal. So, hmm, hmm, ideas are forming there's so, in my there's head. There's so many fun it. ways, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I love that. Okay, very cool. All right, well, let's talk about the summit a little bit. Why don't you start with telling us what the summit is, right? Sure. Let's go there. Sure. So I'll also start with, I never thought I'd be doing a summit <laughs> because like I said, I work full time and then yeah. people say, how the heck do you have time to do all these other things? And it's just a creative outlet. And I've really enjoyed it, like I said before. But it kind of stemmed from people kept asking me, well, we kept having the conversation of, oh, gosh, I yelled at my kids. I feel so guilty. Mm. Or I wish I had the time to do, I don't know, anything. <laughs> go anything? exercise. <laughs> yeah, go to the bathroom by myself. Go ah, whatever, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So from all those conversations, like I call myself a perpetual learner. And so... I've read different things. I've listened to different podcasts. I've gone to my fair share of summits. And so I kind of went, oh, people keep asking me what I'm learning or what I've been doing that has made things better. And so why not bring all these experts I'm learning from into one place so I can share with people in one place, all the things that I have found helpful. And so that was how I decided to do this crazy thing. <laughs> on a summit and it's called the whole wellness mama summit and we're focusing on four different things they do tend to overlap it's mental wellness physical wellness productivity organization and parenting all very small topics right <laughs> but i just really believe in 
we deserve to feel whole again, right? Mm -hmm. Mamas tend to lose ourselves, pour ourselves out and not put ourselves first or care for ourselves well. And so I just want moms to know that you're not alone and that there are strategies you can use to feel whole again, to feel well, not just in one aspect, but all of these things, because I think they all play together and Mm -hmm. we don't feel whole unless all these different pieces are there. Yeah, no, I think that's amazing. And, and I was going to ask what whole wellness mama means to you, but I think you Mm -hmm. just put it out there, right? Like it is just filling ourselves up, right? Putting our own oxygen mask on so that we can help others. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, it's one of the things I'm passionate about as well. And I just talk about it from an angle of let's get your home in order so that you feel amazing. Cause once your environment feels amazing, it's so much easier to help do the other things in your life that you want. And so I think all of these aspects fit together where you've got your mental, because again, clutter isn't just physical stuff. It's mental clutter too. Mm -hmm. And I've seen time and time again, as you can start to take control of one area of your life, it's easier to take control of your physical health as well. And then of course, all the parenting pieces that fit in because holy moly, becoming a parent, I mean, was just a straight up, here's a mirror you have to look in every single day and acknowledge everything you really maybe wanted to bury about yourself, but you don't get to do that because you're like, she's the right, like you're right there. (laughs) And also I think one of the other, on the flip side of that, looking at my daughter with such just awe of what an amazing, like little person she is. And just, just being so, I mean, in awe is the best word I can think of, right? Mm -hmm. Just so amazed with her. And then thinking like, how come you can't look at yourself that way, right? If If she is so much of you and you see so much of yourself in her, right? You also should be looking at yourself in the mirror, the way you look at her in the mirror. And I think that has been one of the more beautiful parts of parenting that I have come into in more recent years. I know those early years are really tough when you're sleep deprived and you just don't know what's coming and you think, gosh, these phases are never going to end. They do. I promise. (laughs) But kind of getting to the part where she's a little bit more self-sufficient and all that hard work we've put in in the beginning is coming to fruition. And so, yeah, it's interesting, but I love it. I love this idea. And you asked me to be a part and I couldn't be more excited to be part of the productivity part of the summit. So I'm excited to get to join you. So thanks for asking me to be a part. Absolutely. I I think you're fantastic. And decluttering is something that is on my, I need to do it. My husband is much more of a minimalist and would love to have everything out, but I can go on later. <laughs> we can well, talk we more about my session now. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> my decluttering. Yeah. You do not want to see what's behind me. <laughs> it's, if you're watching it's this on video, she reason. blurred it out. <laughs> <laughs> and you do not want to see the floor because my kids have built a Lego village in preparation okay. for friends. Anyway. I love that. No, that stuff isn't clutter. That's the thing. And that's the other thing. It's not about living in a neat Pinterest perfect magazine worthy house. It is having the stuff that you and your family want to have around you, right? You're going to have a full stocked kitchen because that's what makes you happy, right? Cooking with your family. You're going to have the Legos. Kids need things to play with. It's just that they don't need every single toy from the toy store, right? And we don't have to feel guilty about not buying them every single toy at the toy store. I will say giving our daughter an allowance and letting her buy whatever she wants Mm -hmm. with that money has been huge because suddenly it goes from, we were at, we went up to Griffith Observatory recently and she, we were like, well, bring your money. Cause there's a gift shop. If you want to buy something yeah. and we go in the gift shop and she saw this moon ball. And I guarantee you, she would have asked us to buy it for her. But the fact that it was $18, she goes $18 for that. And it was so interesting awesome. watching her brain go, I don't think so. Like I work hard for that. She and her friend have a little jewelry stand. So they actually make jewelry and sell it on top of her regular allowance. And so entrepreneur right there, she has plenty of money to spend if she wanted this $18 moon thing, but she just suddenly is thinking like, I put in a lot of work. That's a lot of earrings for me to have to sell to get that ball. I don't think I want it. 
And those kinds of moments I think are just amazing. So I know your kids, I think are a little bit younger than our daughter, but they're seven and nine. Okay. Oh, so right about the same age. I mean, they're right around. Yeah. So that's always been one of my favorite ways to help older kids, especially start to kind of go through their stuff is once they have to buy it themselves, they're like, Oh, okay. Maybe I don't really want that thing. Also, that's funny because I feel like my kids have gone, it's only $18 and I'm going for that, for that. Right. <laughs> I'm just like, who am I racing? But they have their things. They oh, have yeah. certain things that they're like, nope, that's too much. And it's only like $5. And some other things where they're going, oh, that toy kitchen's only $80 or something ridiculous. Yeah. And I'm like, Ex- excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> I know you have your birthday money and all, but I need to yeah. let go. My husband has told me it is their money. So if they want to spend it, but I'm going, but well, and let them make the the mistakes. That's the better part too, right? Let them make the mistakes. Like our daughter bought the giant Harry Potter castle with her own money. She Uh sold, yeah, the Lego one. Uh She sold the Barbie house to buy the Lego house and had birthday money and stuff. Cause that thing is ridiculously expensive. I mean, Oh, let's talk about (laughs) spending a lot of money on something, but it took us a week to put it together. And, you know, I don't know that she plays it with a ton, but she did actually play with it this last weekend when she had a friend over. And so, you know, it does get played with a little bit, but it's, I think it's just a great reminder. It's always there. She's looking at it to be like, Hmm, was that the best use of my money? And she can decide whether it was or not, but I think I love the reminder there for her. Yeah. 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 I think we have a ton of stuffies. I don't know what happened in the last like six months or something, but there has been an explosion of stuffies and that's what they asked for. Mm. They asked for Mario stuffies for their birthday, all these things. And so I'm going, okay, if that's what you're putting on your list, that's what you're putting on your list. I can't say no. Right. But if you can't sleep on your bed, I don't know (laughs) where they're going. Yeah. Right. And when is enough? So (laughs) <laughs> yep. Well, and you don't have to buy them everything on the list. Like this year, our daughter had quite the list. Not, not actually, it wasn't that long and it wasn't that much stuff. I don't think she got anything on her list for her birthday. Oddly enough. Even from and, grandparents? Nope. My parents gave her money so she could okay. buy something on her list. Okay. And Graham, Graham did give her something on her list. So on her dad's side. She did buy the number one thing on her list, which was a new fish tank for her beta fish. Oh. Beta fish are we saying? Yes. So poor Scalius needed a new home. It was pretty small. So he got a new home. The name. And uh, yes, that was her name. And uh, yeah, so that was the number one thing on the list, but everything else, I don't think she got anything else on the list. And the funny thing is, even though she got money, she has not gone out to buy the things on the list, which I think really is the more interesting factor. Yeah. Yeah. I know my kids have a lot of money stored up as well. And I have found it very heartwarming when they want to spend that for other people. Mm -hmm. Um, That has been something I've seen. And the generosity spirit is something that I was like, oh, we haven't really focused on this per se. But Mm -hmm. I love when they're like, well, I'll use my money to buy my friend an extra gift, or I want to get someone this thing, or I'll buy you ice cream or whatever it is. Oh, sweet. Like, oh, okay. That's you really can't say sweet. no to you wanting to buy other people things or donate to things. That's really nice. Oh, I love that. All right. We've gotten a little off topic, <laughs> but I think it really did come back from the right stuff is a tool for us to use, to enjoy, to make our space beautiful. It's not about deprivation. So don't beat yourself up when you're like, there's a Lego village. That's amazing. I love that there's a Lego village on your floor. Like how creative is that, that they're ready for their friends to come over and play together with them at this, with this Lego village. I love that. So thank you. That is a good reminder. That is a good reminder because I was getting all upset, you know, when I move my chair and I hit something and they're like, you broke something. I'm like, but it's my office. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think to say, Hey guys, this is, it's, you've put it in my path. So yeah. you must also be aware that we must share said space, but yes. yeah, but it is, all around. it's a good reminder that it is. I love hearing them talk and be creative and have this village where they're role-playing different things. And I'm guilty myself. Like I love deals and I love my buy nothing group. Mm, <laughs> and so yeah. 
I am guilty of receiving things that I probably don't necessarily need. Well, not, I definitely don't need it. I want it. (laughs) But then it's also really fantastic. You said stuff is a tool. Like it is so much easier for me to give things that have had meaning to me to Mm. loving homes, right? I might've had a hard time letting it go, but if it's going to a good home, like, yeah, it's so much easier to give. Or if somebody asks for something and I'm like, oh, that's been sitting there and I thought I might need it, but no, I don't need it. It can Mm -hmm. go to someone else that needs it more. And there's like a huge, huge part to that, right? So I don't know if everybody has a buy nothing group that are plugged into, but they're amazing. I love mine. If you don't have one, people, it's on Facebook. Although I will say, try really hard not to look at the things that people are giving away. That's true. I, That's I did true. that, right? Like when I first signed on, I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, look at all this stuff that people are giving away. And our, our buy nothing group is super generous and they give away some amazing things. I got a Ninja coffee maker from there, which yeah. was amazing. I've gotten, I don't know. I've gotten a few things from there that are like really great things. Then I have also given back a ton of things. Like we just gave a dresser. I gave that Ninja coffee maker back when I got an espresso, you know, like I've given rugs and kid stuff galore. Like I love giving stuff on there yeah. and I give away good stuff because I just don't want the hassle of dealing with it. Now, some things we will sell like her dollhouse, right? Their Barbie dream house that was worth a decent amount of money that she was going to get back. That was worth selling. Plus then she gets to use that money. And I like, I like that distinction of like, for me, it's not worth the time, but for her, all she has is time, right? So it's so much easier to say, okay, we're going to put in this effort, help me write the ad, let me help me take the pictures, showing her what it's all about and doing it together. Because I know a lot of people will say to me, but I just, I could get a lot of money for it. And I'm like, could you, could you really? And is it worth your time? And you, especially as a busy working professional mom of two, doing all these extra things, sometimes it's just worth just like, get it out of your house instead. I do like that you clarified for your kids stuff because I did give my kids the option for some of the things mm. that they got for their birthday and things like that. Like we had the, what are those reading pens where you like tap the oh. book and it reads to you anyway, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, leap reader pens. So we had like a whole set of books and pens and I said, we can donate it. We can give it to someone that needs it. Or if you want to sell it and I mean, that's your thing. And so I think that was one thing they chose to try to sell. Mm -hmm. And we did. I mean, it wasn't super expensive that we sold it at anyway, you know, (laughs) but it was something that they got back into their, their bank per se. So I like that distinction. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Let's see. What direction should we go in next? This is fun. This is one kind of more of a free free spirited conversation. I don't <laughs> generally just have conversations about all sorts of stuff, but tell us about some of the people that are going to be at the conference or at the, in the summit. Sure. So we've been talking about cooking. Um, there is a person named Katie Kimball, who I really, really love. She has a kid's cooking course. Uh, and then also other things like stress mastery for moms and various things that I have tried almost all of them. And she's a fabulous teacher. So she will talk and share about kids cooking and how it can also benefit us as moms. And I think I've already shared a number of the reasons why it has benefited me and probably why she like struck home for me when I found her during the pandemic, because my kids already knew a lot of how to cook. But anyway, I think she just makes it very accessible for, for a lot of people. Love that. Planning. Planning is a huge thing, right? So Megan Sumrall will be talking about weekly planning and easy ways for us to make it happen because we think we don't have the time, but Mm. we can find those pockets of time. Ned Johnson, he talks about how to raise self-driven kids and and how to be a non-anxious presence for our kids, which is, I think, a huge, huge thing. And he just, I don't know, I've heard him in other summits and I was like, Ned, I want you to come talk with me. Would you talk with me? And he was so amazing. I think he was the first person that said yes and really great guy. So he will be there. Oh gosh, I like have so many different things. Another Deanna, Dr. Deanna Minnick, she will be talking about like eating the rainbow, which is a fun way to increase our health. And there's different ways and why all those colors are unique and important for our bodies. And so that was a fascinating learning for me because I, I know I should eat various things and various colors, but hearing all the like reds are for this, yellows are for this was fascinating to me. 
I was going to say, oh, a just... couple of the women in the conference, I think, have already been guests on this podcast. So I think Perfect. Hunter yeah. Parkfield and yeah. Michelle Perda, I think, was recently yeah. on the show. So I know that listeners of this show will love the summit because clearly we're talking about the same things and we have a lot of commonalities there. So a lot of the people, if you're listening to this show, I mean, you're definitely going to want to check out the summit and it is free, right? To sign it's up. Free. It's summit? free. It's yeah. free. Yeah. If you want to keep it, there is an upgrade so you can keep it forever because I keep listening to the recordings. I've done most of these recordings already and there's like <laughs> such good information in there. I'm like, wait, what did I miss? I need to go listen to it again. And there's like additional bonuses that people have thrown in. Like Sienna, you've thrown in an amazing additional bonus as well. So yes, there is an upgrade option, but if you just want to come, please just come. It is completely free. You have it for the week. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And like you mentioned, Hunter Clark Fields. I'm just going to run on the two that you just yeah. mentioned because they're all so amazing. Hunter will talk about like how not to yell. And I don't know how many people, like I said before, right? So many conversations of, oh gosh, I yelled at my kid. I did not want to. I felt good, guilty. We talked mm. about, I'm sorry, I reacted that way. But how can we stop doing that as much and, and trend better? So that was a great discussion. And Michelle, communication with our, our partner, right? Our spouse. Yeah. Oh, in parenting, it gets even more complicated. So yeah. great things there oh, too. Gosh. There's just great things. There's yeah. something for everyone. I promise uh, you'll <laughs> take away. I guarantee one nugget, but I say, I, I don't know. I don't know how many nuggets you're going to take away, but it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. And there's how, how many speakers are there in the summit? 20, 21. No, I think 21. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So there's lots of nuggets. <laughs> yeah, lots, lots of nuggets. Lots of nuggets. Also giveaways. Oh, my thing is not set up yet, but I don't oh, know if you've heard of the, the Thrive Command Center. It's amazing. And Brett with the company is going to come talk about like why it's so important to have that organizational tool. Because, like we said, stuff are tools, right? Mm -hmm. And this is a really pretty way to organize your calendar, your stuff. Your, so anyway, nice. giveaways. So there's even giveaways. giveaways will also be there. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't even know that part. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's like drive a log cards. Have you done drive a log cards? <laughs> like no, going what on? is this? So Adam Brooks is also going to be talking. He's like a, a huge advocate for safety for kids and how to talk to our kids, especially in the middle school, high school ages. Mm -hmm. But he created these cards, which are called drive a log cards. And they're just conversation starters for, you know, kids and parents, especially because I think a lot of good conversations happen in the car when you're not mm -hmm. seeing each other eye to eye, or I shouldn't say that, but you're just not face to face. And no, so totally, I get that. You feel like you have a little more protection, I think yeah. in the car for some reason. Yes. Yeah. When you're, they're not staring you down, right? The parents yeah. aren't staring into your soul and yeah. you're like, <laughs> there's something oh. less maybe focused or stressful and, yeah. and you're going from one place to another. So it's more casual, but he created these cards so that there'd be a meaningful conversation in the car and I think they're kind of fun and they have different age groups so those will also be giveaways they're just fun things so just for coming for signing up for this free summit you might win stuff that yes. are actually useful tools for parenting very cool oh that's fun I'll have to check those out I mean that makes sense right yeah I love it okay very yeah. cool well, people are going to want to sign up for the summit. So if you are interested, you can go to wannabeclutterfree.com slash summit. Again, that's wannabeclutterfree.com forward slash the word summit. And you can sign up for the free portion. You can upgrade, do whatever you want to do there, but you'll have all the information on the summit there. And then Amy, why don't you tell people where they can find you specifically? Sure. I am on a number of different social areas and they are not the same name. I'm working on that eventually. But if you want to find me on Facebook, I am Amy Nesbitt. On YouTube, you can find me at This Japanese American Life. And on my Instagram, I am Amy Ends Eats because that is oriented around my food adventures. I love it. And we'll make sure we link to all of those in the show notes. So if you didn't grab those, if you didn't get a chance to write them down, just come on over to the show notes and you'll be able to get them there. And you can follow Amy on all her different amazing pursuits and different joys and hobbies and all those kinds of things. I, I just think it's so fascinating that you are going against that norm where people say, I just don't have time. And it, come on, if you have time as a full-time working parent with two boys, you're cooking in the kitchen with them, you're teaching them all these wonderful things. 
we have some time to squeeze into our life. And I just, I think it's fantastic that you're sharing that with everybody as well, just so we can see that, oh, other people are on this journey and they're doing it too. So thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody's journey is different, right? Not everybody is going to want to be in the kitchen with their kids. It's just not their thing. But I guess you make time for the things that you want to, right? And and we should enjoy each part of each day where possible because it's so easy to just roll through each day stressed and worried about the next. (laughs) Yes. Well, and thank you for bringing that up too. I was someone, I was, oh, this is going to be weird. I was, <laughs> I was watching the Arnold documentary on Netflix. Yeah. It's all about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Anyway, okay. yeah, it's called Arnold. And it was, he was saying something about that, right? People have time to worry, but it doesn't help us do anything. And so if we, instead of, like you said, choose joy, if we can, instead of choosing to worry about something and then doing it. He's like, people worry and then they go to work and then they worry and then they go to work and then they worry and they go to work. It's like, why don't you flip it? Think about the fun thing and then go to work and then think about the fun thing and then put in the effort. And then, you know, maybe things wouldn't be as drudgery as we think they are. So yeah. 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 And in the summit, I'll talk about routines because I think routines are essential. Like, On a normal day, I'll say a normal day as in a non-summer, like I go into the office day, I'm up and gone out of the door within 30 minutes. And so Mm -hmm. if I did not have that, (laughs) if I did not have my morning routine, I would be forgetting things. I would be so stressed. Be like, okay, come on, who's doing what, you know? And so I think that's fantastic. And then to your point, like having the time we have, I I love one-on-one times. We call it special Mm -hmm. time. People call it different times or different things, but even 10 minutes with one child at a time where they get to pick whatever they want. And I put down my phone, I put down everything, like no distractions, being present in the moment, just these things to foster connection. And especially as a working mom, I just feel like that's so important for me to be able to do that for them as well as myself. So I'll just talk about different routines and and things that I have found really, really helpful for myself to keep myself sane. Mm, love that. Yes, that is so important and such a wonderful reminder again on that one-on-one time, especially when the summer's here and things can get kind of chaotic and hectic and I'm trying to squeeze all this stuff in and she's our daughter's home and the camps are over and we've got a little travel coming up, but I got to squeeze all this stuff in before we go. And so, yeah, having that reminder of just, if you have some one-on-one time, it's a good point. It does really carry through a lot and it holds a lot of weight. Um, I think in those moments when you do need to be busy. So thank you for that reminder. I'm excited for that chat. That'll be fun to, to tune into. (laughs) And it's so easy, right. To think we're together 24 seven, you know, like we don't need more time together, but it's, Mm -hmm. it's different. Like if they get to lead, they get to do all the things. And we put down, like I said, like my phone, it's put Mm -hmm. away my watch. I have to take it off because it dings. And good point. um, Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. All right. Well, my favorite way to end every show is with three rapid fire questions. Oh, okay. And the first one is what does clutter free mean to you? So I think it is getting rid of the stuff that you don't want or need, right? Because I think there's a huge thing, difference between needs and wants. And like we talked about before, like stuff itself is not bad, but when you are focused on the stuff, or the stuff that you want, or the stuff that you're comparing people with, comparing with.
others, like that's just where it gets all cluttered everywhere. Right. So being free of wanting the things, wanting things that we don't need and being able to let go of the stuff and instead be present with people, be present with the period of time that you are in and not being worried in your brain, the clutter in your brain and the clutter of the stuff that you are trying to achieve or trying to get. I don't know if that made sense. (laughs) That is my answer. Yeah, I think it did. My question, a follow-up question to to that is, how do you think you would feel if you felt clutter-free? Oh, I think it would be so much lighter. I think that is the first thing that comes to my mind of like when I give something to someone, I feel like a joy. I feel a a lightning both on myself of letting something go and feeling like, okay, I don't need this. It's okay. I will survive without this thing. And then also being able to give to someone else, you know, and, and helping in that way. And so I think little by little, when we let go of the stuff that we think we need or the thing that we want or whatever that may be, it could be physical stuff or it could be that job or that state of life or that whatever that we tend to worry about and think if we have that, I think once we let go, it's just a lot lighter and you can live in the present, live with the people around you in a better yeah. way. Ah, oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> So true. So true. Okay. Number two is what is one of your favorite pieces of advice? We may have covered it today, or if there's anything you want to reiterate from today, what would that be? I think it's don't say no right away. You don't know. And this was in the context of college and I was looking at a finance job posting. (laughs) So this This is like totally random advice or like conversation that I had with a friend And he said, don't rule out finance. Don't, it it might be different from what you've experienced already. And it totally was like, I ended up going into a finance role, which has been where I have been for the last 17 years. And it's been true for so many other things too, right? The, the YouTube, like who would have thought I would have said no, if I, if you had asked me like five years back, but I decided to do it. And then it has opened up all these different avenues and tons of things in the pandemic where I said, oh, that's kind of weird, but okay, let me see where this goes. And fast forward to me doing a summit (laughs) and talking to a bunch of amazing people about how to help moms better our lives. So just don't say no right away. Give it a, give it a shot, have an open mind. And so many things can open up. Very cool. That is the first time I've heard that answer. I love it. (laughs) And then the third one, what is making you happy right now or in this season of your life? I mean, my kids are at a really fun age right now. Mm -hmm. So my kids are definitely a joy. But the other thing is like we've been talking, being creative has been a really big joy for me in doing things. Like I said, I'm actually normally in the finance field of corporate life. And so creative isn't necessarily one of the things that we should be doing right and so being able to do these videos that are fun chronicling our travels chronicling our eats and passing on accessible Japanese recipes to people that keep asking me like how do you make delicious Japanese recipes that aren't super super time consuming and so all these things are just a creative outlet for me that bring joy and then when people leave like lovely notes comments you know all of that it just also makes me happy that I'm giving back into the world of people that I have not met yet in real life. Yeah. I do love that part. And I love, yeah, you put something out there and you never know who will connect with. So that part is really cool. Awesome. Well, Amy, thank you so much for joining me today on Want to Be Clutter Free. I just really enjoyed our conversation and just your open openness. And I am, thank you so much for asking me to be part of the summit. I think it's um, amazing. And if you're listening to this, yeah, definitely check out the whole Wellness Mama Summit. It's going to be really, really fun. Thank you for having me, Deanna. Yeah. Have a great day. Wasn't that great? As someone who does things differently at times, I love connecting with others who are forging a different path too. And even more, I love to hear how one small change can lead to projects, connections, and ideas you never considered before. 
All it takes is one tiny step and then a commitment to following your curiosity. But I would love to know your thoughts on the episode. What were your favorite parts? Did you have any big takeaways? Well, send me a DM on Instagram or comment on this post. If you want to come over to the social channels, I am wannabe clutter free on there, all one word. Or come over to the wannabe minimalist family group on Facebook and share with the community. There will be a discussion thread for this episode, and we'd love to chat with you in the comments. And thanks again to Amy for joining us on the show today and for inviting me to be part of her Whole Wellness Mamas Summit. The sessions run from July 24th through July 28th. And remember, it is free to sign up. So head on over to wannabeclutterfree.com slash 162 to get your ticket and to learn more about Amy and the Whole Wellness Mamas Summit. Again, that's wannabeclutterfree.com forward slash the number 162. I hope to see you there. And as always, thank you for joining me today. If you made it this far, just a reminder that I would be thrilled if you left a rating and a review for this show. It only takes a minute and it means so much to me. So thank you for helping me out. And with that, I hope you have an amazing day. And I will see you back here next week for a solo show when I will be discussing using fresh starts at a great jumping off point for decluttering and getting organized. And what better fresh start than a new school year? It's going to be a good one. So go ahead and subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out. I'm Deanna Yates, and you've been listening to Wanna Be Clutter Free. I'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.